You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Whether it's your passion for grisly crime dramas, nail-biting thrillers with monstrous city-destroying creatures, or iconic will-they-won't-they rom-coms. Wait, is this monster really doing kung fu? On Tubi, the things you love just keep going. Tap the banner to learn more. The Past and the Curious is perfect for families looking for a history-focused podcast everyone can enjoy together. I'm professional museum educator, author, and musician Mick Sullivan, and I have been creating The Past and the Curious for six years. There's humor, rich context, and surprises in every episode. There's dozens of stories about survivors and heroes and villains and a lot of underwear. Find us in all of the usual podcast places. The Past and the Curious with Mick Sullivan. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Welcome to Triviality Blood Sports Season 3. Uh, my name is Matt, and I'll be introducing today's semifinal contest. It is the West Coast Finals. We have two competitors that we're really excited to have on the show. Um, coming to us out of the concussion protocol, I'm being told I wasn't there, uh, is Ryan Myers. Ryan, how are you doing today? I am feeling much glad, uh, better and glad to be back. Or gladder, mm -hmm. as I said, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, we're all glad you're back. Uh, that's very important information. Um, these have been playing pretty tough. You think that they're going to keep uh, beating down these contestants today? I, I now that depends because if I remember correctly, the the first rounds were tough as well, and both Matt and Kylie, our guests today, did pretty well. So I'm excited to see how this goes. Uh, absolutely, and I'm sure our contestants are eager to get in there. But let's reintroduce them. Uh, if you haven't been listening to the series so far, uh, both competitors were victorious in their first round matchups, uh, leading to this battle of the best coast, best contestants, I guess. I don't know. Uh, coming to us first is Matt Takamoto from the Bay. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me back. Did you ha learn any really big lessons from your first round that you're going to take over into this final? Um, the, the strategy I really picked up was to answer more questions correctly than my mm -hmm. opponent. I feel like that's, that's a really good path to the finals. Yeah. That's I pretty like controversial. That's... <laughs> I, it's, it's a bold strategy. We'll see if it works out. Yeah. It's a, it's a mistake. A lot of newbies make, uh, you don't need to, uh, to make it wrong on purpose. Um, well, thank you. And good luck today, Matt, uh, facing off against Matt will be Kylie Diggs from Mesa, Arizona. Kylie, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me back. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see what we've got in store today. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, you were victorious by a slim margin. Do you expect today to be a nail biter as well? Uh, if we have to go through multiple rounds of tiebreakers, I might pass out. So hopefully it won't <laughs> be like that this time. Well, we'll find out. Um, so I'm going to toss it back to Ryan now. Uh, a slightly, we're doing the streaks format for this round, I believe, correct? Yeah, that's correct. We're just going to reward you if you can string some correct answers in a row together. So if you get a question correct, it's one point. If you get the question after that, you get two, three, et cetera, et cetera. If you get one wrong, you start back over at one for the next one. So those middle questions are going to be pretty important. Um, I did not place any specific emphasis on them. You're just getting the questions that were there because I wrote these before I started this uh, this round idea. All right. And there will be math involved. So good luck to the contestants on me being able to calculate this correctly. Um, so if both contestants are ready, well, let's get started. All right. Speaking of math being involved, question number one, mathematically speaking, what is the term for the ratio between two quantities whose sum is at the same ratio as the larger one? Mathematician Luca Pacioli called it the, quote, divine proportion. Wow, Ryan, coming out swinging. It's, yeah, there were, there, I, were I a lot of word, there were a lot of words in there. I knew some of them. Uh, yeah, it's math. A category I don't do, but I always throw in for the nerds on the teams. I'll lock in an answer. Alrighty. Kylie, you get to talk it out. That's not going to help. 
Uh, I got I got nothing on this, um, so I'm just gonna say the golden ratio. And Matt, uh, I am also locking in with the golden ratio because it's a ratio that I know exists. That's and all I got. I can't name another ratio either. The golden ratio is correct for one. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well I done. That's folks. when you get more comments than likes on your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's go to question number two. On September 11th, 1973, which Chilean prime minister killed himself in office so the fascist puppets of soon-to-be-installed U.S.-backed dictator Augusto Pinochet couldn't have the honor of doing so? Wow. This is the only name that, when you say Chilean politics, the only name that I could think of was Pinochet. So you said it in the question, which (laughs) puts me in a problematic position. Um, I'll just take a guess with a lucky Hernandez. All right. And Matt, uh, the name that was coming to mind is Allende. So I checked in with that. And it is Salvador Allende. That is correct. So that'll be two points for Matt. Let's go to question number three. The holiday called Pesach in its native language is most commonly called what in English? I can lock in. All right, Matt, you get to talk. Um, let's see. I don't have a, a like real strong connection to any of this. Um, it sounds somewhat Jewish, and there are lots of holidays to choose from there. Um, I'm going to go with Passover. And Kylie? I said Passover. Passover is correct. One more point for Kylie. Matt picks up three. Let's go to question number four. This one will be over television. Which actresses acclaimed TV roles have included main roles on the two Mike Flanagan haunting series, as well as playing Love Quinn on the show You? Um, I don't watch You. I've heard a lot about it. Um... The names that are coming to me that are popping in my head are wrong because they're from Euphoria. (laughs) Uh, I'll just say Emmy Rossum because that's a name. That is a name. And Matt? Uh, I did something similar and just picked a name that has, I'm hoping the word included means there are other acclaimed TV roles besides these three because I don't know these three. I went with Natasha Lyonne. Uh, Good guesses all around. The correct answer is Victoria Pedretti. Everybody back down to one for question number five. Which team has the second most Stanley Cup titles all time with 14, despite not having even made it back to the finals since 1967? All right. So I'm pretty sure the most is the Canadians. And I know that they haven't been in forever, but I think they are the most. Probably Canada. Poor Canada. (laughs) um i will say the toronto maple leafs all right and matt yeah i always whenever stanley cup content comes up my mind always goes to canadians versus maple leafs and yeah i think it's the maple leafs that have had the long drought so i also checked in with the maple leafs and it's correct for a point apiece. Absolutely. The Maple Leafs have just been cursed since 67. They got out of the first round this last playoffs, though, which is a huge achievement for them. But, yeah, they just keep choking in the semis. Uh, well, hopefully nobody here chokes in the semis. Uh, but leading to that, after five questions, uh, Matt with a somewhat comfortable lead at 7-3. to three, But with the score multipliers, it's still anybody's game. It is. Let's go to question number six. After U2, who is the second best-selling musical act from Ireland? The year 2000 album A Day Without Rain went seven times platinum and contained the only single that took them to the Billboard Hot 100 Top 10 in the United States. I'll lock in. All right, Matt Takamoto, you are free to speak. Okay, Um, I'm thinking a lot about the year 2000 and music in the year 2000. I was barely a teenager at that time, so my musical tastes were not good, to say the least. 
Same. Um, let's see. One single in the top ten. The answer that's coming to mind feels too feels too late for this act, but I'm going to go with it anyway, and I'm going to say Enya. All right, and Kylie? I also said Enya. Only time was the single. It is Enya. Very well done. Really? Wow. Yeah. Huh. Her, her big breakout was in the 90s, uh, so like by the time she was popular and people were craving her next album, 2000 would have been kind of appropriate for that. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess, yeah. I, I'd definitely associate her more with the 90s, but all right. I would have guessed Ricky O. Martin, so I would have been way off. Ricky, yeah. Ricky O. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, the OJs are, are Irish, right? <laughs> they, they are. Um, hey, number seven. If you're looking for a brand of feminine hygiene products that are all natural, plant derived, and might cause Winnie the Pooh to take a strong, fervent, elbow deep liking to you, you could trust which brand founded in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> That's an yeah. image. It's an image. Again, if you're looking for a brand of feminine hygiene products that are all natural, plant derived and might cause Winnie the Pooh to take a strong, fervent elbow deep liking to you. You could trust which brand founded in 2014. I'll lock in. Alrighty, Matt, you're free to think aloud. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm now just like vomiting words into my brain that are somewhat Winnie the Pooh related, whether it's honey or hundred acre wood or Oh bother or, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. A, a feminine hygiene brand called Oh Bother. Oh Bother. That would be appropriate. Um, let's uh, let's not let's not overthink things here and just say honey. All right, and Kylie. I also said honey. Oh, oh you're so close, y'all. It's called the Honey Pot. Oh, <laughs> that I, that pot, that like briefly flashed into my head for a second, but I. If I figured keep it simple. Yeah, the honeypot. Um, hey, let's go to number eight. Which movie was created when its directors said they wanted to make the classic Japanese animated film Ghost in the Shell, but live action? The creators took a lot from that source, including the quote, Digital Rain, now closely associated with the movie they made. I'll lock in. All right, Matt, you're good to talk a lot again. Okay, uh, let's see. Directors. This feels potentially like a Wachowskis kind of a thing. Um, it did rain a lot in The Matrix. I don't necessarily associate it with digital rain. No, maybe that's the 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 Matrix like characters going down. I'll, I'll lock in with The Matrix. All right, and Kylie? I also said The Matrix. <clears throat> You're spot on. The digital rain is the green computer mm -hmm. characters falling down. It is the matrix. We'll go to question number nine. Uh, named after what it does, what is the re in rebar short for? I'll, lock I'll in. check. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, Matt, what did you have? Um, I went with reinforce. <clears throat> and Kylie? I said reinforce. Yeah, reinforcing, reinforcement, reinforce, all of that is fine by me. That is exactly what it does and what it is short for. So that is two points apiece for all of you. Going into question number 10. What all-time word to f*** over your opponents in a game of hangman is the term for when three or more celestial bodies in the same gravitational system are arranged in a straight line? I'll lock in. All right, Matt, you get to think aloud. Um, let's... Hmm... I can see potentially something with a bunch of Z's in it, but I can't think of it. Um, so I'm just going to lock in with the silliest word with a Z in it I can think of right now, which is I'm going to lock in with Zaxby's. Zaxby's. <laughs> and Kylie? So I think this is it based on the hangman clue. I think it's, and I don't ask me to spell it, but I put syzygy. S Y Z Y G Y syzygy is correct. Nice. Oh. So that's three points for Kylie and Matt. Where does that take us? Uh, three points at the end makes this a very, very close match. Um, but Matt started out so strong. It was a big comeback from Kylie, but the final score was 12 to 11. And oh. Matt, Oof. Matt is wow. here by the slimmest of margins. Your West coast champion. Congrats. Nice night. Really nice game. Good comeback. 
yeah, it really came down to just one of those questions at the beginning. Matt was able to kind of pick up the streak and build that up. And then well, uh, he got the three through. pointers and then Kylie got the three pointers. But I think he just got one more in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So great job by both competitors. Uh, Kylie, thanks so much for being a part of Bloodsport. But unfortunately, this is the part of the the event where we send you off a cliff, I believe, Bonnie and Clyde style or whatever that is, just sending right off. Um, any last words? Um, to lose on a feminine hygiene product called the <laughs> Honey Pot <laughs> is all I could ever hope for in this world. So I will say peace to you all. And good luck, Matt. I hope you take the whole thing. It's always uh, it's always more fun if you lose to the eventual champion, they say. Although it's not really that fun. <laughs> yeah, but thank, you you, thank, you. thank you for inviting me. This was really fun, guys. I appreciate it. All right. And words from the victor. Matt, how are you feeling heading into the uh, finals? Uh, I was feeling real shaky because, uh, you know, I listened to, to Kylie's quarterfinal and I was very nervous coming in. I knew I had to bring my A game. So, um, thankfully just, just barely made it. Um, but you know, survive in advance as it is in blood sport or any other, you know, tournament <laughs> of this elite caliber. So we're right. on to the next thing. We have you up there cutting down the nets on your, uh, Werner ladder or whatever, right. whoever sponsors <laughs> your, your triviality. Um, yeah. So thank, thanks everybody so much. It was such a fun game, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, we need to, have you rest up so you're in peak condition heading into these finals? Because I know it's only going to get more more brutal and more deadly, right? I am hydrated and uh, ready. All right. And also to thank all of our contestants who are members at our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash triviality podcast. Uh, feel free to head on over there. Um, there's different levels of support for as little as $1. Uh, you get access to stickers and welcome letters, $5. There's bonus content and uh, episodes and a lot of fun stuff and also i would love to thank our network airwave media uh we're an airwave media podcast uh check out these other airwave media podcasts including food with mark Bittman, uh reach a space podcast for kids that sounds fun and one you might have heard of good job brain uh, we're on the same network. It's very exciting for us. We love that. Um, thanks again to Ryan for hosting, for Matt and Kylie for playing. I was Matt and this was Triviality. Spend less time staying in the know about all things gaming and more time actually watching and playing what you want with the IGN Daily Update Podcast. All you need is a few minutes to hear the latest from IGN on the world of video games, movies, and television with news, previews, and reviews. So listen and subscribe to the IGN Daily Update wherever you get your podcasts. That's the IGN Daily Update wherever you get your podcasts. Monsters are as old as humanity itself. Monsters embody our fears. Yet, they help us define the boundaries of what it means to be human. We know most monsters aren't real. Yet, we can use monsters to learn about reality, psychology, biology, folklore, literature, critical thinking. We're on a journey to learn about the world through the lens of monsters. And we hope you'll come along with us Subscribe at monstertalk.org.